So it's been a while since I released my tier list video a while back, and that video looked over characters before they were finished being reworked. For this video, and obviously over time opinions change, and I think some characters are better or worse than I initially thought, so I kind of wanted to go back and make a new tier list based off of where I think the characters are now. Note that this is obviously reflective of my own thoughts and my own opinions on the characters. This really shouldn't dictate your decision on what character you want to play the most, because at the end of the day, you should play whoever you enjoy playing the most and whoever you want to stick with. The premise of this video is going to be a little bit different than my previous one, because over time what I've realized is characters tend to be able to be broken up into different categories, and based off of those categories you might think that certain characters are better or worse than others. So I decided to make this graphic that I think would help identify what the characters specialize in, and I do think that this is going to help a lot in explaining why I think certain characters are better or worse than others. For each character, I'm going to go through their setup, their ability to harvest things, their ability to grind mobs, their mobility, their survivability, and their combat. To go into each category, setup is how much it takes for the character to get to a point in which they can make adequate use of their abilities. So character who needs a lot of things to be placed in order to use their abilities will have a lower score. So for example, a character like Wendy who has Abigail immediately will have a higher rating in that category than a character like Wanda who would have to jump through some hoops before she can get all of her tools. Combat I think is pretty straightforward. This is just how well a character does in a combat focused scenario, so things like bosses or just dealing with mobs individually. This includes different things like Wakeford's healing, Wardley's dishes, and obviously Wolfgang's double damage, and any differences in health that are majorly impactful. The harvest category is how well a character can harvest or farm basic resources. This includes things like rocks, wood, sticks, grass, berries, crops from gardening. Things that can be, as the name suggests, harvested. Grinding is similar to harvesting, but the distinction is, this is how well a character can farm mobs and hostile enemies. The reason this is separated is because these are two different tasks that require vastly different preparation than one another, so it made sense to me to separate them by category. The mobility is a category that is somewhat unique in that speed and movement is a huge factor in this game, as characters either have them or they don't, but travel is such a big factor that just due to the amount of things that you need to get at most any given point in time is big enough to warrant its own category in my opinion. The character's survivability is a category that seems non-specific at first glance, but as far as characters go, some characters are simply better at ignoring the conditions that the game puts you in than others, and are therefore much better at just day-to-day -day survival. This is for characters that can do things like ignoring the seasons, dealing with hunger, sanity, and health easily, and things of that nature. So without further ado, let's start at the beginning. Wilson is the most average character in this game, but he isn't without his perks. As of his recent update, he has different categories in which he can split up his perks. That being the torch category, which can essentially make his torches last longer and glow a bit brighter, and he can also throw it to provide a stationary light. The alchemy category can turn items into other items, for example logs to twigs and vice versa, transmute minerals into other minerals, that being things like flint to rocks and vice versa, and can turn certain mob resources into other mob resources, such as beard hair into beefalo wool and vice versa. His beard category can make his beard grow faster and can make his beard provide more insulation, and at its final stage, he can put food in his beard as extra inventory slots. The shadow category allows the crafting of pure horror to dreadstone and vice versa, and pure horror to nightmare fuel. Additionally, this provides a 10% damage resistance to nightmare creatures and a 10% damage increase towards lunar mob. The lunar innovator tab also allows you to craft pure brilliance into infused moon shards and vice versa. Wilson's setup is in a weird position in that he levels up over time, but after that his perks are all available at the beginning of the game. Whether or not you want to count this as a setup for the character is up to you, but because it's a one-time unlock, I'm assuming that you'd already have it. It's also really easy to just cheat the days by using console commands if you want to go down that route and you have that option. But because it's a one-time unlock and it transfers over throughout the entirety of your playthrough once you unlock it initially, I think there's definitely something to be said about his setup being bad because it requires you to unlock all the insight, but once you unlock it, it transfers throughout the entirety of your playthroughs. It's in a very weird position, his setup is a little bit contentious in that regard, but for the sake of this, I'm going to assume that you already have all the points unlocked, so I'm going to assume that you have 15 insight to spend on whatever category you want. There isn't really anything to say about his harvesting, farming, or mobility, because he is just incredibly average in all of these. 
there is something small to be said about his ability to harvest things just because if you harvest one thing you could turn it into another but usually the exchange rate on those is enough to not warrant you going through it and just farming the things outright with the exception of things like gems but ultimately it's not enough to make a difference of the individual character's ability to harvest large amounts of resources his ability to survive however is somewhat boosted by the fact that he has a beard Having an extra three inventory slots for food and being able to just ignore temperature for the most part will help the character tremendously in just day-to-day -day survival. His ability to turn big meat into morsels will also help him turn things like one pig kill into two meatballs, assuming that he has the filler for it. And that'll be just a nice thing to help him out throughout his days. For this reason, Wilson is in B tier. I think this is probably just gonna be the very average tier. I don't think many characters are going to be here because I think characters are either really good or really bad most of the time. But this is to be expected of Wilson's performance since he is the basic boy. It makes sense that he's about average. Willow is definitely not the most amazing character in this game, but she definitely has her perks. Just to run down her perks, she gains sanity from being near fires. She has fire immunity, which is what it sounds like. She can stand in and be caught on fire with no downsides. She has a lighter which she can use as a torch, albeit with less light radius, and can be cooked on. She also has the perk where she extinguishes smoldering things faster, which is exactly what it sounds like. This also doesn't deal any damage whenever you extinguish it. She has increased fire fuel efficiency, meaning that she could fuel things like campfires or fire pits or even endothermic fires with more efficiency than other characters can. Willow also has access to Bernie, which will draw the aggro of any nearby nightmare creatures. And if Willow is at low enough sanity, it will turn into Bernie exclamation point, which will turn into a big mini boss that fights for you, has a thousand health, and draws the aggro of any mob nearby. Willow, however, is less insulated, meaning that Willow freezes faster and she also doesn't get as much insulation from insulating items such as a winter hat, and takes less hits than average to become frozen due to the effects of things like Ice Hounds or Deerclops' attack. Fire immunity pairs pretty nicely with her ability to gain sanity from being near a fire, her ability to extinguish smoldering things faster is nice and her fire efficiency is also something that is pretty nice. But the real standouts of Willow's kit is her lighter and burning. Before I go into detail about those, I would like to say Willow probably does need a buff or at least more perks that focus on her fire based themes. You know, just as a little side note, Bernie helps tremendously throughout the game as his ability to draw the aggro of large groups of nightmare creatures makes him amazing in the ruins. He's a lifesaver in groups where other people have low sanity and are spawning their own nightmare creatures. And he also decreases the amount of time required for you to deal with nightmare creatures since his constant aggro drawing ability lets you just hold F to attack them. Willow's lighter is pretty nice for her since it can be used to get value from cooked things on your way around the world. This paired with rock fruit which are some of the best food in the game, mean that you can not only get hunger reliably, but bits of health throughout. Willow's ability to cook on fires faster helps a bit with preserving large quantities of food that might be going bad, and saves time in cooking things over the fire. All of these perks are pretty nice, but nothing is too majorly impactful, I would say aside from Bernie, to push her to a point where I'd say she is an amazing character. She's still moderately redundant when it comes to late game, when you have access to something like Bone Helms, but an early game Bone Helm can set you up pretty well throughout the entirety of the game. She really shines in a group setting, which is why I think that this character isn't bad, but this character is definitely below average, which is why I'm putting her at B-. Wolfgang is rather straightforward. He is kind of the muscle of the cast, so to speak. He has a mighty meter that gives him some benefits when it's above a threshold, and, mostly, disadvantages when it's below a threshold, with everything in between being the middle ground. His non-specific downsides, those being the ones that he just has regardless of what form he's in, include a 6.25 sanity drain from dusk and night. This is different because every other character has a 5.0 sanity per minute, everybody else loses 5 sanity per minute during dusk and night, but Wolfgang has a 6.25 when not near an ally. The effects of insanity auras from monsters are also increased, and he also has to deal with his might meter management. When Wolfgang is mighty, he deals double damage, he has the ability to carry heavy items with no speed penalty, he has no speed penalty from wearable items that would give you a speed penalty, those things being things like a piggyback, a marble suit, and the ice cube. He has plus 30 cold insulation, faster chopping, mining, and hammering with a crit chance, and he has better rowing. In this form, however, he also does have minus 30 heat insulation. When Wolfgang is wimpy, 
He has minus 30 cold insulation, plus 30 heat insulation. He has a minus 25% hunger drain, but he also deals 75% less damage. Wolfgang's setup is really easy to do since you just need to chop down trees or mine rocks in order to raise his might meter. That paired with the option of making dumbbells makes it really simple and really easy to consistently raise. But the fact that you have to manage it frequently is a pretty annoying downside in and of itself. His ability to harvest things is higher than average since he can get tree chopping and mining done quickly. But this isn't more efficient since he also uses more durability when he's in his mighty form. Grinding out enemies is also easier for Wolfgang since more damage means that you could deal with enemies faster and easier than most other characters. Wolfgang's mobility is also a bit higher just due to the fact that he has more options that help him with both traversing the oceans and moving things like Suspicious Marble from one point of the map to another. The fact that he also isn't hindered by the piggybacks downside can help quite a bit in traversing the world and just going back and forth. All of these are just options that other characters simply don't have. However, I will say that him stopping to announce that his meter changed sucks a ton for Wolfgang, and it has a habit of happening in the worst times possible. Wolfgang's survivability does suffer a bit though, since his frequent sanity loss is an annoying thing for him to deal with. His increased resistance to temperatures helps him a bit, but isn't an amazing perk since most of the time you're going to want to be mighty. Needing to manage his might meter can also become tedious over long spans of time, but isn't something that's unmanageable. His combat ability speaks for itself, since bigger number, better person and whatnot. I do feel like people value Wolfgang and double damage a bit too much in the grand scheme of the game, since combat isn't really something that you do too often as time goes on, outside of the bosses that you could set up farms for. Ultimately though, Wolfgang isn't a bad character by any means, which is why I'm putting him at A tier. There's no doubt that Wendy is a strong character due to the large amount of applications that you can have for her abilities. The primary ability being Abigail, which is what Wendy really revolves around. Abigail being a big AoE tank that can deal with small hordes of enemies, as well as dealing additional damage to, primarily, non-AoE enemies. An amazing perk and probably one of the single strongest perks in the game, which is probably why all of Wendy's next perks kind of revolve around Abigail. Wendy has access to the Ecto Herbology tab, which allows you to craft certain items. To give you a quick rundown, the Revenant Restorative increases Abigail's regen from 1 per second to 3 per second for 1 day. The Spectral Cure-All increases Abigail's regen from 1 HP to 20 HP per second, or 30 seconds, which is less consistent than its counterpart, but more effective. The Unyielding Drought doubles the duration of Abigail's shield from 0.5 seconds to 1 second for a day, which if you're unaware, the shield absorbs all damage after the first initial attack. The Distilled Vengeance doubles the duration of Abigail's shield for 1 day, and all mobs attacking the shield will take 20 additional damage. The Nightshade Nostrum makes Abigail deal nighttime damage during day and dusk, and the Vigor Mortis increases Abigail's movement speed by 75% for one day. In addition to all of these tabs, Wendy also has perks that are revolving around her, those being her decreased sanity loss from darkness and insanity auras. As Wendy loses 25% less sanity whenever it's dusk or whenever she's near an enemy that has a insanity aura. Wendy also has the downside of dealing less damage without Abigail. As Wendy only deals less damage than average if she isn't attacking with Abigail applying her debuff. If Abigail is present then she deals 1.15 times more damage than the average player. Wendy is definitely one of the strongest characters in this game right off the bat. Spawning with Abigail and being able to get the stuff she needs to buff Abigail almost immediately is an insanely strong option. She harvests basic resources the same as any other character, but her ability to farm large amounts of things like spiders, splamunkies, and hounds, to some degree, and things with small health pools is extremely useful. Her mobility is the same as an average character, and her decreased sanity drain helps her quite a bit just existing in the caves, which is why she's better at ignoring sanity than average. Her decreased sanity loss might not sound like too much, but it can be the difference between needing something like a Tam O'Shanter in the caves versus needing a top hat. Since Wendy is one of the few characters that has the option to passively gain sanity by just wearing a top hat while living in the caves full time, which helps tremendously in things like Summer. Abigail helps Wendy a ton in single target combat, those being enemies that have a single target rather than an AoE. This includes enemies like Dragonfly, Bee Queen, Crab King, or even Fuel Weaver, since she provides a debuff to the enemy, which isn't specific to her. 
If Abigail is providing the debuff to that one enemy, every character can benefit from the small damage increase. All of these things combined do help Wendy's case in being a very strong character. However, over time she tends to fall off due to having better alternatives to farming enemies. Though most people point to her 75% damage, that being without Abigail once again, as being the main reason why she's held back. But most of the time you're gonna have Abigail out. So I don't think that's too big of an issue. The big thing is there are just alternatives that help you farm things that she already does a great job of farming. But the fact that she could just bypass all of that helps tremendously throughout the game. For this reason, I'm probably going to put her in S-. I don't think that she is as good as the characters that I'm going to put in S rank. But I don't think that she is as bad as the characters that I'm going to put in A. Which is a little bit of an oxymoron because, you know, characters that are in A tier probably aren't bad to begin with. But I digress. WX is a very fluid character in that he can do a ton of things pretty well after gathering the necessary scans. His main gimmick is his circuits, which to give you a quick rundown, his hardy circuit increases max HP by 50 and takes one pin, his super hardy circuit increases it by 150 max HP and requires two pins, his processing circuit is plus 40 max sanity, one pin, super processing circuit is plus 100 max sanity and two sanity a minute regeneration and it takes two pins. His Bean Booster circuit regenerates 5 HP every 30 seconds and it is plus 100 sanity and plus 2 sanity a minute. This requires 3 pins. His Chorus Box circuit gives him a sanity aura of plus 5 a minute and it talks to plants nearby. This is 3 pins. His Gastro Gain circuit is plus 40 max hunger, 1 pin. His Super Gastro Gain circuit is plus 100 max hunger and hunger drains 20% slower at 2 pins. The Acceleration circuit is 25% movement speed requiring 6 pins. The Super Acceleration Circuit is plus 25 movement, plus 40 movement, or plus 50% movement, depending on whether or not you choose 1, 2, or 3. These require 2 pins. The Thermal Circuit is plus 25 heat radius, plus 20 minimum temperature, and food loses freshness 25% faster. Drying off rate is also increased by 10%. This requires 3 pins. The Refrigerant Circuit is plus 25% cold radius, minus 20 max temperature, and 25% slower spoilage. And at 95 wetness, it resets your wetness and gives you 2 ice, and this requires 3 pins. The Electrification Circuit gives 20 thorns damage, gives lightning and electric insulation, and you can charge from volt goats. This is 2 pins. The Optoelectronic Circuit is just Moggle's vision and requires 4 pins. And the Illumination Circuit grants small light radius, and is 3 pins. WX's downsides are that he has lower starting stats, since WX has some of the worst stats in the game when he spawns in, but it can easily be remedied with just getting the app for it, so to speak. He also takes damage from rain and wetness, so rain will damage WX and wetness will make him passively lose health, which is of course a downside paired with the fact that if he's wet enough then he'll drain his charges on his slots. WX just has to scan things once in order to get access to his perks, which still requires you to scour the map for the mob in question, but once you have it in the world, you have it. It's basically the same thing as prototyping. He doesn't really have anything to help him out in harvesting things, and he doesn't have too much to help him out with combat. His mobility is easily one of the best in the game, being leagues above everyone else. His ability to ignore most core aspects of the game through one thing or another is incredibly strong and allows him to survive with very little effort on his part, and his combat abilities aren't really anything too major since his only tools to help him out with combat are things like speed, which, while it does help him take less damage in theory, it doesn't really help him kill the thing better than anybody else, aside from Thorn's damage, which is more of a meme than anything else. Overall, WX's versatility definitely puts him higher than average. However, I don't see him faring as well in regards to ranking as Wolfgang. But at the same time, he the fact that he is more versatile does kind of raise the question of whether or not he should be higher. He's definitely going in A tier. Wickerbottom has an insane amount of options to influence not only her, not only the things that she does, but Wickerbottom has tons of options to influence the world as a whole, which ultimately results in her being one of the most powerful characters in this game. Wicker's whole kit revolves around her books, so we should go through those, just get an idea of what they do. Birds of the World calls 20 to 30 birds to land within a certain radius of the caster. Sleepy Time Stories puts nearby mobs to sleep. Horticulture Abridged grows 10 food plants within a certain radius. Horticulture Expanded is the upgraded version of this, which grows 15 food plants and tends to nearby garden plants. 
Applied silviculture grows nearby grass, saplings, trees, and reeds, and calls down tree yards. On tentacles spawns up to three tentacles. The end is nigh generates consecutive lightning strikes. The angler's survival guide spawns a school of ocean fish that can appear in the ocean type it was read in. Pyrokinetics Explained extinguishes all burning or smoldering objects within a three turf radius, including campfires and fire pits. So keep that in mind if you do choose to use it. The fiery pen is spawned from each reed, which can be used as a fire staff. Overcoming Arachnophobia spawns a small spider web under the player that slows all mobs except other players and flying mobs. Tempering Temperatures removes wetness from players within four tiles, dries their inventory, and sets the temperature of the characters to 35 degrees. The Lux Eterna creates a beam of light above the player, which functions the same way as a surface light in the cave does, but it only lasts for about half a day. The Lux Eterna Redux is the upgraded version of this. It summons a beam of light that lasts for two in-game days and covers a slightly larger radius. Practical Rain Rituals toggles rain. It's pretty straightforward. It turns rain on or off, depending on whether or not rain is on and off when you read it. The Lunar Grimoire forces a full moon to happen and resets the lunar pattern as a result. Apricultural Notes summons two friendly grumble bees that will follow the player up to a maximum of 16 grumble beads. The Everything Encyclopedia lowers the requirement of prototyping items from science, magic, and think tank tiers for each player within four tiles or one craft each. This can be stacked, so if another character is near you and you just read it all times, you're going to get the three crafts value out of the Everything Encyclopedia. All these books combined turn Wicker into a powerhouse with the ability to effectively turn summer into a longer spring, turn spring into autumn too, force full moons every night so that light sources aren't really necessary. She can improve the growth of other resources with such efficiency that you don't have to harvest things for in-game years. She can help tremendously with early game options with books that give her access to tons of shortcuts that help to get a stable position early on. And Wicker Bottom provides such an insane amount of options to negate threats in seasons. She does, however, suffer from the fact that she needs quite a bit of setup. All of these books require papyrus, as well as their respective resources, such as living logs, feather pencils, down feathers, etc. And to get all of these, you're going to want a bookcase, if not two, which poses its own form of difficulties in getting. Wigger does help herself in gathering these things with her books, but the setup is definitely not anything to scoff at, especially considering the fact that some characters just start with their kit almost entirely available to them right off the bat. Her combat abilities are about average, but her ability to grind out mobs is boosted by tentacles, though I personally don't like them. So for all of these reasons, and then some, I'm putting her at S tier. Woody is a very interesting case in the scope of Don't Starve, because he's very much supposed to be the jack of all trades, which in the eyes of some makes him bad, but in the eyes of others makes him pretty nice to have, with one major exception. So Woody's perks are pretty varied. He has faster chopping speed overall. He starts with Lucy the Axe, which is an infinite axe, with the downside of it being annoying. And his biggest perk is all revolving around his transformations. All transformations give 204 insulation to heat and cold, and a 70% water resistance, as well as night vision. These transformations trigger during a full moon and can be forced through eating monster meat or crafting their totems. In these forms, his hunger is replaced with a awareness meter and steadily goes down if you don't perform the transformation's respective task. The first transformation we're going to go over is his moose form, which gives him 59.5 damage and 90% armor. This also gives him the ability to charge into things, causing AoE damage in his path, but it also damages structures, so keep that in mind. He also loses meter faster when he's not fighting and is slightly slower when it comes to movement. His goose form gives him the ability to walk over water and increases his speed by 1.4, but he loses his meter faster while not moving. The beaver can chop trees, mine, dig, and hammer things. This also removes the ability to spawn tree guards or poison birch nuts. However, keep in mind that mining, digging, and hammering is less effective in this form. If you're not doing any of those things, then the beaver meter goes down quite a bit. All of these end up meaning that Woody is a jack of all trades type of character, who has pretty easy access to his whole kit only requiring monster meat for the most part, and the additional easy-to-get resources. His ability to chop trees and mine things as Beaver with no need for a pickaxe or a hammer makes him slightly better at harvesting, but not enough to put him in a solid B in that regard. His ability to grind out mobs is also helped by Wearmoose, but it's pretty lackluster, all things considered. His mobility during Goose form is fine. Increased speed and access to the ocean stuff helps a ton early on. And Moose helps a bit with combat, but most of the time you're better off just playing Woody with a helmet, unfortunately. 
Because all of these are bound to transformations, it also locks you out of things like picking things up and locks you out of your inventory, which makes them a bit too committal for my liking. His survival is a lot worse than other characters because of an event that happens late game called Moonstorms. Moonstorms guarantee a full moon each night, and Woody suffers tremendously from that, since he's gonna transform every single night whether he wants to or not, which can drain hunger and sanity incredibly quickly and hinder his overall ease of survival. I will say though, Woody is kind of nice to have until Moonstorms exist, or if you don't have access to either enough characters that he fills the roles of, or any of the characters. The characters that he's typically compared to are things like Maxwell and Wirt, since their ability to chop wood overshadows Woody almost entirely. His Wirt Moose form also has some uses in his AoE charging attack, but that can also be done by Abigail, Wendy's dead sister. So ultimately, Woody's kind of stuck in a position where he's not necessarily better than everybody, but he is a lot more condensed in regards to what his character can do. I definitely don't think that Woody is a bad character, but he isn't great. I definitely think that he's better than Wilson just because of how many bases that he does cover, but that's about it. Wes is... Well, he's Wes. You know, everyone knows how big of a meme Wes is as a character. He's a challenge character that is basically meant to make things harder. I don't really know whether or not it's worth it to get into his perks. Like, Wes is just kind of bad, but for the sake of being thorough, let's just run through them. Wes starts with a pile of balloons that lets him craft some nonsense, which you know, we could go through that. He can craft a balloon, which when popped deals 5 AoE damage. He can craft a speedy balloon, which gives a speed boost for a small amount of time that steadily deteriorates. But it also indicates a position on the map, so you could use it to mark things, I guess. His party balloon provides AoE sanity when it's popped. The inflatable vest prevents damage from drowning. Taking any damage will cause it to pop and deal a static 5 damage. This can't really be negated through any means, like uh, Wigford's damage resistance or wearing a football helmet. His balloon hat protects him from lightning strikes and some wetness resistance. Popping it will also hurt the player. Wes also has a lot of other perks that just make him kind of unfortunate. He has a higher likelihood of being targeted by hounds, meaning that if you're in a group of people, if you're in a group server, you can take aggro away from hounds, but most of the time you're better off just killing the hounds yourself. Wes also deals less damage, which is really unfortunate. He is more susceptible to overheating and freezing, and he takes more time to recover from grogginess. So this is whenever you're sleeping or when being slowed down by attacks from things like gestalts. Lightning strikes are also more likely to hit him, which is annoying. Wes is also less efficient when using tools like chopping, mining, and hammering. This also means that his tools are not going to use up the same amount of durability as any other character would when using them. One of the other things is that Wes doesn't speak, which might sound like more of a meme to anybody who's like just listening, you know, how important is talking. But whenever it comes to gardening, this is something that Wes kind of struggles in because he's not going to be able to talk to plants. He also won't announce when hounds are approaching or when a boss is approaching, which can be quite a big hindrance. You know, Wes sucks, but... At, at least he has access to his tools, like, basically immediately. You know, that's... He has some movement option in the form of Speed Balloon. You know, he... Despite it, you know, going away really quickly. West sucks, don't play him. Obviously, he's a bottom tier. You know, I, I, I don't think you guys need me to tell you why West sucks. Maxwell is a very interesting character after his rework. He still retains bits of his old role as a gatherer, but has tons of new options that help him with a ton of other tasks. Most of his kit revolves around the Codex Umbra. With the Codex Umbra, you could summon shadow workers to chop trees, dig stumps, and mine rocks, and gather resources within their set radius for an amount of time depending on how busy they are. His shadow duelists deal damage dependent on a few variables, such as Maxwell's equip slots, his contribution, and the tier of whatever he has equipped in regards to the shadow category. His shadow prison allows him to spawn a shadow prison, go figure, around whatever mob you target. This will lock the mob in place and render them immobile. Keep in mind that they can attack you through the walls, so it's not just a free hit. His shadow sneak spawns a shadow trap that causes enemies to become scared, similar to haunting them and turns certain enemies into their shadow counterparts, such as bunny men into beard lords and spool monkeys into shadow spool monkeys. This also influences their loot table. All of that is mostly stuff that I think can be overlooked. It does make it easier to farm nightmare fuel from them, however. 
Maxwell can also craft the Magician's Top Hat, which allows him to access a universal item storage. Similar to how an Ender Chest works in Minecraft, this is shared throughout multiple different items that you could place throughout the world. The Magician's Trunk is a stationary Magician's Top Hat that allows other characters to access the Top Hat inventory, not just Maxwell. Maxwell also regenerates sanity at a rate of 6.6 .6 per minute. The biggest downside to Maxwell, however, is that he's frail as Maxwell only has a maximum of 75 HP. Maxwell requires some setup if you want to optimize his damage output, but even with the small amount of prep, he can gather tons of materials and fight better than average. He doesn't really provide anything particularly special when it comes to grinding out enemies, and he doesn't really have any terrific movement or teleporting options. He survives about as good as anybody else, though his lower health is a pretty annoying factor, but I say it's kind of offset by the fact that he basically never has to worry about sanity, due to just having a passive sanity increase. He does really well in combat due to his new Shadow Duelist and how they work, being able to reach some of the highest DPS in the game. Overall, Maxwell is a really strong contribution to any server, given that you can play him well. I'm a little bit on the fence of putting Maxwell on S tier, if I'm being real. I see his utility, and I acknowledge that like Maxwell is an incredibly strong character, but in order to reach his full potential, I think he kind of relies on Wickerbottom and her books in order to become like a staple in a server, since Maxwell paired with Wickerbottom's books means that he can also harvest things incredibly quickly. Depending on whether or not you want to factor other characters having like synergies with one another, or depending on whether or not you want to factor in like how bad his setup is in regards to optimizing your damage, because while I do put his setup at B, this is just for like what he has immediately. Because you don't really need his extra damage from having like high tier shadow equipment, but it's definitely nice to have. I am probably just going to put Maxwell at S minus rather than S, because I don't really think that he breaks the S tier cap, if that makes any sense. This is definitely going to be something that's contentious, I feel, but you know. Let me know what your guys' tier list is in the comments, because like this is something I'm a little iffy about. Wigford is one of the combat focused characters, but what she brings to the table is something that shouldn't be undervalued. Wigford's perks involve sanity slash health leeching, as Wigford regains sanity and health from fighting enemies, an increased damage, just giving her a 25% damage increase regardless of, you know, game state that she's in, 25% less damage taken from enemies, and she has access to these things called battle songs, which help her out in combat focused scenarios as well as help out other people around her. The weaponized warble causes weapons to drain 25% slower. The heartrending ballad gives her 0.5 plus more HP per hit, and it gives other characters around her plus one HP per hit. The clear minded cadenza gives her plus one sanity per hit for nearby players. The bell canto of courage reduces sanity drain by half to all nearby players. And the fireproof falsetto reduces fire damage by 33%. Wigfred's notable downside is that she only eats meat. Wigfred can, however, eat certain goodies, but for the most part, it's only just the meat. Wigfred is a character who is almost entirely focused on combat. She starts out with meat to help her early on, and her helmet and spear to make killing enemies even easier. And it just helps her survive for an amount of time. It's not really great, there's not really anything to say about it. She doesn't really have any particular method to harvest resources better than anyone. And while her items can help with farming other enemies, ultimately the difference is negligible. She doesn't have any major movement options in comparison to other characters. And while her restriction of only eating meat is a hindrance for her general survival, she also has to deal with less sanity and health due to her lifesteal ability. This also just helps her with fighting things paired with her songs. She can be a ton of help in fighting bosses with significantly less prep, which gives her a great combat stat. Overall, Wigfred's a pretty above average character. I wouldn't really say that she's like amazing, she's not particularly great, but I definitely think saying above average is a good description for her, which is why I'm putting her in A tier. Weber is a character that benefits tons from having as many spiders as he can to overcome most everything in the game. Weber's main appeal is that he could tame spiders. All spiders are neutral and can be befriended with meat. Weber is also able to eat monster meat with less penalties than other characters. He grows a silk beard, which over time provides a small amount of insulation and can be shaved for more silk. But most notably, Weber has the ability to craft things that are spider themed. Spider eggs are craftable only by Weber. He has a den decorating set, which lets Weber decorate up to five dens, which will reduce the size of the spider web that they give off and make all nearby spiders neutral to players. 
He has a webby whistle, which is used to bring out spiders from their dens and rally spiders to you, similar to soothing Abigail. He has a shoe box, which de aggroes all spiders within an area and dismisses all befriended spiders. He has healing glop, which applies an AoE healing that affects both spiders and Weber. He also has the option to turn spiders into other spiders using switcher doodles, which all have their own various effects based on each archetype of spiders. He also has the ability to shave dens and sleep in tier 3 spider dens. And his major downside isn't really that great. He is a monster character, which means that pigs and bunnies, as well as cat coons, are going to aggro onto him. But that's about it. I guess another one of his downsides is his 100 max sanity, which is still manageable. It's not really anything to write home about, all things considered. But Weber's kind of a average to below average character in that regard. Weber's setup is something that kind of depends on a few factors, but for the most part, if you're going to play Weber, you're probably going to need to wait for spider's nests to develop, and you're going to want to gather a large amount of spider nests in a congested area. This is just going to take a long while, but it can be helped by just boosting up the growth of a spider nest by applying silk to it. He doesn't have anything special about his ability to harvest things. His ability to farm spiders and his ability to use those spiders to farm drops of other mobs is something that is pretty beneficial, assuming that whatever you're trying to farm isn't something that you're going to be farming for meat or meat-based items. His mobility is slightly better than average due to the fact that you can, if your base is just infested with spider nests, get a speed boost from them. His ability to survive are pretty average, all things considered. His ability to sleep in nests is fine, but it's almost entirely inferior to a tent. And even then, it's a pretty niche ability for him to use. His higher hunger means he'll be able to ignore his stats for a bit longer, but his lower sanity means that he's going to need to manage sanity a bit more carefully. But he can eat raw monster meat and excels at gathering it, so everything kind of rounds out. His nurse spiders can help tremendously in boss fights due to just being, essentially, Passive health regen so long as they stay alive. Other spiders being present also helps a ton in boss fights against enemies that don't have AoE. So he's a bit higher than average when it comes to combat, but ultimately Weber is just kind of below average. Like spiders aren't really something that you should rely on. They're good for their drops, but I have a hard time putting Weber on the same tier as Wilson. I would say that he's a little bit below average, which is why I'm putting him at B minus. I have a lot to say about Winona. I main her, so be aware of any potential biases. You know, I'm almost definitely going to be biased in regards to how I rank Winona, so this is probably going to be, like, the big topic of contention, but, you know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll justify it in some way. <laughs> Winona's perks are pretty mediocre, all things considered, with one big exception. She has the ability to speed craft, which is just crafting twice as fast as average, with above half hunger for a cost of 5 hunger for the initial craft. She has the ability to dodge Charlie for once per time in the darkness, but most importantly, she has the engineering tab. This includes her trusty tape, which stacks up to 40 and repairs clothing similar to a sewing kit, Winona's catapults, which are stationary turret-esque items that deal AoE damage, Winona's spotlights, which provide a small light radius around the player, and Winona's Gemerator and Generator, which both power the catapults and the spotlights, can charge WX, but the normal Winona Generator uses Niter, as opposed to the Winona Gemerator, with an M, that uses gems to power them. Winona's speed crafting also relies on her hunger. When she is below half hunger, she loses the speed boost and instead crafts slower. Winona has some horrendous setup in order to play her as effectively as you'd want. And she doesn't really have anything to help with gathering the resources. However, and this is pretty important, Winona is the best character when it comes to grinding out large amounts of mobs at a time. She's almost uncontested in that regard, since a properly set up Winona farm can be expanded almost indefinitely. She doesn't have any extra movement slash mobility options, and she does about as good as any other character at surviving. Her lowered crafting time is definitely an amazing thing in mega base servers, in which you'd be crafting a large quantities of one item more than average, and her catapults can help with most general combat in this game, but her real appeal is how well she does in regards to farming enemies. That is easily the best thing, and honestly, I think that is enough, personally at least, to put her in S-. I have a hard time saying that she's S tier, 
but the fact that she can expand her farms infinitely, the fact that she can use them to farm a wide variety of enemies, just puts her at such an advantageous position because of that one thing alone. I will say, however, Winona should get more. You know, I think Winona's design right now is kind of lackluster, but that's that's for another time. That's a video for another day. Wardley is a very tough character to put on tier list because his downside is very impactful and his upsides are fine, kind of. But a lot of his perks revolve around his food, which have some uses, but overall are kind of meh. He has access to the portable crockpot, which provides the ability to make unique recipes, as well as, as the name would imply, just being a portable crockpot. He has access to asparagus spacho, which provides 25 hunger, 10 sanity, and 3 HP requires asparagus and ice to make. The main appeal of this is it decreases temperature by 40 degrees for 5 minutes. The Bon Bouillon, which is 150 hunger, 5 sanity, and 32 health, requires bone shards and an onion. The Fish Cordon Bleu, which is 37.5 hunger, minus 10 sanity, 20 HP, requires frog legs and fish. But this has the added benefit of providing wetness immunity for 5 minutes. The Fresh Fruit Crepes give 150 hunger, 15 sanity, and 60 HP. They require fruit, butter, and honey, which are pretty beefy stats, all things considered. Glowberry Moose gives 37.5 hunger, 10 sanity, and 3 HP, but it requires a glowberry slash two lesser glowberries and one fruit. This also gives you a light radius for three days, keeping you protected from Charlie all that time. The Grim Galette gives 25 hunger, 5 sanity, and 1 HP, and requires two nightmare fuel, one potato, and one onion. This also has the quote-unquote benefit of swapping sanity and health. The Hot Dragon Chili Salad gives 25 hunger, 10 sanity, and minus 3 HP, and requires one dragon fruit and one pepper. This increases temperature by 40 degrees for 5 minutes. Keep this in mind, because I'm going to be touching on it later. The Monster Tartar gives 62.5 hunger, minus 20 sanity, and minus 20 HP, and requires two units of monster food, those being monster meat or durian. The Mokeka gives 112.5 hunger, 33 sanity, and 60 HP, and requires an onion, a tomato, and a fish. Puffed Potato Souffle gives 37.5 hunger, 15 sanity, and 20 HP, and requires potato and eggs. The Volt Goat Schaud Freud gives 37.5 hunger, 10 sanity, and 3 HP. It requires Volt Goat Horns and 2 honey, and it applies electrical damage to the player's attacks for 5 minutes. In addition to just the crockpot, he also has the portable grinding mill and the portable seasoning station. The grinding mill allows Warly to make spices, while the seasoning station allows Warly to apply those spices. Each spice does a different thing, so let's go over them. Garlic powder reduces incoming damage by 33% and requires garlic to craft. Honey crystals doubles mining, chopping, and hammering speeds, and also requires honey to craft. Chili flakes increases damage by 20%, requires pepper. And seasoning salt increases the HP of crockpot dishes by 25%, requires salt. His biggest downside is that he is a picky eater. He's only able to eat crockpot dishes, which, given that he starts with the portable crockpot, isn't too bad. He also gets diminishing returns if he eats the same dish, but for the most part, you could kind of ignore this downside by just relying purely on meatballs and meat stew, assuming that you have a steady income of meat. Just due to the way that his memory works in regards to his food, since if you eat those two, it's enough to last for about three days, meaning that Worley can outlast the quote-unquote memory that he has on his food, just by relying primarily on those two things on loop. Worley requires tons of setups to get his desirable recipes, but some recipes are super easy to get, such as honey crystals, which allows him to harvest trees and mine rocks more efficiently, as well as allowing other characters to do the same. His ability to grind enemies isn't really great. He just has a standard character kit in that regard. His mobility is standard, his ability to survive is questionable, due to his major downside of only being able to eat recipes from the crockpot as well as his diminishing returns. His combat abilities are pretty good since Volt Goat Shad Freud is an incredibly strong option, especially when spiced with pepper flakes, leading to some of the highest damage output in the game. Worley benefits more from giving other characters his items, however, and as such, that's where he really shines uh, as a swap character. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. I think Worley as a character is pretty bad. Uh, he has some interesting options. The biggest thing that about Worley is that his upsides are kind of whatever. 
Like, obviously, he does have the recipes that do unique things, and I think that's really where he shines. But the recipes that do unique things are pretty few and far between. And either their ingredients to make them are pretty limited, or, like, just kind of out of the way to get, or they are deceptive in how good they are. For example, the hot dragon chili salad and the asparagus bacho, while they do decrease or increase their respective temperatures, the amount of time varies. Because the way it actually works is these things are essentially thermal stones that the longer they exist in a world when not bundled up, that in mind, the less effective they are. Meaning that if you leave an asparagus bacho in something like the icebox or, I don't know, let's say like one minute or two minutes, it's not going to go bad. It's not going to get stale, but it is going to lose the amount of time that it decreases your temperature. Same thing with hot dragon chili salad. If you leave it in an icebox for an amount of time, it's going to lose the amount of time that it increases your temperature by. So ultimately, those two are pretty bad. Just due to that one change, making it really hard to stock up on them for future use. Other than that, all of the other recipes are kind of out of the way to get unless you're already super committed to farming, which in and of itself requires quite a bit of setup to get the necessary ingredients that you want. A lot of them are just really hard to justify their cost. Uh, one of the biggest standouts, however, is his Volt Goat Shad Freud, being able to boost the damage of a lot of characters to insane numbers. His easy access to some of his seasoning also helps tremendously, such as honey crystals, since honey is probably something that you're going to want set up anyways. Just being nice to splash on most any dish that you're making, just because of how easily accessible honey is. But ultimately, I think Worley isn't good. Like, despite all of this, I think that Worley is kind of bad for his, like, horrendous downside. So for that reason, I, I kind of just don't feel comfortable putting him anywhere other than C tier. I think Wartox is probably one of my most controversial takes, because a lot of people are under the impression that he is an insane OP character, while I have made quite a few statements saying that Wartox is the contrary. But since those videos have been made, Wartox has seen a massive improvement since I, last time I made a tier list at least. Which granted him the ability to teleport across the map, he gains sanity from healing with souls and he gets more hunger from eating souls, so what do I think about Wartox's update? Like, how, how has that changed my opinion of the character? Well, to elaborate on his perks a little bit, Wartox has soul hopping, which can teleport short ranges up to twice per each soul. And he also has the ability to teleport across the map for an amount of souls proportional to the range traveled. Wartox has the ability to eat souls, and this just gives him 25 hunger and minus 10 sanity. Wartox has the ability to heal with souls, so whenever he drops him, he has 20 HP worth of AoE healing with minus 1 HP per player nearby, with it being kept at a minimum of 15 health. Souls can be gathered from killing mobs or just being near mobs that are getting killed. So that's how you harvest those. Wartox's downsides are pretty major, what with his biggest one being food is half as effective with him. This means that every stat you gain from food is going to be halved, which is an insane nerf to the character. It is such a bad downside. His other downside is kind of negligible in comparison. He's a monster, same as Weber. So, bunny men, pig men, cat coons, those are all just going to aggro onto him, which is whatever. Wartox's setup is somewhat unique in that he can't really just get the things that he needs. He has to constantly grind out and manage his souls. His ability to harvest things isn't really improved with his perks. If anything, he has a harder time gathering things because he can't just hire pigs to help him out. But, you know, pigs aren't too great anyway, so I'm kind of disregarding that. His ability to farm groups of enemies isn't great. If anything, he's de-incentivized from doing so, since he's in danger of overloading his souls if he does it too much. So he kind of has a cap in regards to how much he could grind out enemies. His mobility is easily something that carries him, though, since he has a map-wide teleport, mostly, on demand whenever he'd need, which is an insane perk for a character to have. His survival abilities kind of suffer from the major downside of all food being half as effective for him, which essentially means that he has to spend double the amount of time gathering resources. His combat abilities are a bit higher than average due to the AoE healing on demand. The biggest issue that Wartox has, however, is that at most any given point, he almost needs to have a minimum amount of souls on him, which rarely happens because all his perks use up his souls. 
if you want to use his perks often, you also need to spend time grinding out souls over and over again just to have access to the perks. It creates a very annoying and pretty slow playstyle in which you have to grind out enemies to get souls to take care of each stat in whatever scenario you need to restore your stats in. Then there's the issue of teleporting long distances, which is easily his most powerful perk, but it usually takes up about a quarter of his maximum souls. In addition to that, he also has a limit of 20 souls, which you don't even want to stay near, because there's a chance that something just happens to die next to you, and then you end up popping, which causes you to drop about half of your souls, and lose a proportional amount of sanity. Ultimately, Wartox is like, in a very weird position. I understand why people say Wartox is a very strong character, because when he has souls, I definitely think that he is like an S tier character, maybe S minus. He is an incredibly strong character when he has access to them. But if you want to disregard all of his setup that he needs in order to get all of them, then like, I think that's doing an injustice to ranking the character. Because the fact is, you're going to have to constantly be grinding out souls, and you're going to have to constantly be going out of your way to do so. So at the end of the day, Wartox just isn't that great, just due to that fact. Like, sure, if you have the souls, he's fine, but more often than not, you're not going to have access to all of his tools at once, which is kind of bad. And it's for that reason that I'm putting Wartox at C tier. I am putting him above Warly, which, if you haven't caught on by now, this tier list is ordered. So, you know, characters from left to right are better or worse than others. And yeah, like, I get why people would disagree with me, and I get why people would be like, oh, well, actually, Wartox is really strong, because, you know, Wartox has all of these tools and all of these things at his disposal, and, like, a lot of people kind of conflate the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm saying that souls are annoying to get, not necessarily that they're hard. Having to constantly grind them out is where the character falls flat, not necessarily that the souls themselves are hard to get. It's that you have to go out of your way to do it. And you have to go out of your way to do it as often as you need to. Like, I understand that you could kill- I'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent because I feel like people tend to disagree with me on War Talks more than any other character. But, like, the issue is never how hard it is to get souls. Like, anybody can grind out souls for, like, eight minutes, you know, whatever, like a minute, two minutes in order to get up to a full 20. But once you use them, they're gone. And then you have to do it again and again and again. And that takes up chunks and chunks of your day. Like ultimately, it's just so, ugh, it's just so bad. I don't, I don't think Wartox is good. I'm putting him at C. I'm keeping him at C. He's still better than Warly though, <laughs> which is a little unfortunate for Warly. Wormwood is a very interesting character to play since he's very good at what he does, but he's also kind of bad in a lot of aspects. So if you like what he does and you rely on what he does, then he's pretty good. So Wormwood has access to living logs as a craftable item, requiring 20 of his own HP. He has bramble husks, which he can craft to absorb 80% of physical damage, prevents damage from cacti and spiky bushes for other characters, and it deals damage to nearby mobs when you're taking damage. He has the Bramble Trap, which deals 40 damage in a one tile radius when triggered, and also damages any nearby player if you're there not wearing a Bramble Husk. He has Compost Wrap, which restores 8 HP immediately and 32 over 32 seconds, giving him a grand total of 40 HP of healing. He's able to plant seeds without the need of a garden plot or tilling the ground. And easily one of his biggest upsides is his Sanity Manipulation. Wormwood gains sanity when planting seeds and loses them when chopping trees and digging up saplings, grass up berry bushes, etc. Which ultimately means that Wormwood can manipulate his sanity by just dropping it or increasing it almost whenever he wants. Wormwood's able to use fertilizer to heal himself. He has access to blooming when it's spring or when he consumes growth formula. And he has plant neutrality, which means plants that would target Wormwood are just not going to target him. However, he does have the huge downside of having a empty heart, meaning that he cannot heal from food, which is an insane downside. Wormwood does have most of his perks available almost immediately, and he actually needs less than other characters to get started on something that is pretty nice to have. Wormwood's ability to grow crops better than most characters is what he specializes in, so his harvesting ability is incredibly strong. He doesn't really have anything to help him out with grinding out enemies aside from his Bramble Husk, which, while alright, also requires you to take damage 
in order to actually use them. Wormwood's ability to bloom is incredibly strong, giving him a speed boost that is very easy to get, only needing a rotten fish. And his ability to survive is pretty bad, honestly. While he does have access to a very efficient food source, easier than most characters, his biggest downside is in fact just his empty heart. Because he can't heal from food, it makes a lot of his options just that much worse. As a result, his combat also kind of suffers from it, just because it's very hard for Wormwood to heal mid-fight in comparison to other characters. That isn't to say that his downside is, like, insurmountable. You know, a good Wormwood player knows what they're doing, and they can rely on other healing options, such as a Bat-Bat is a Wormwood fan favorite. But overall, all of this kind of, like, makes him have a very safe playstyle. It incentivizes him to have a very safe playstyle. However, he is very good at what he does and what he provides, that being garden crops. Depending on how much you value those, you might put them higher or lower, but I just think that they're all right to have. I don't think they're a necessity, which is why I'm putting him at B tier. He is higher than Woody and Wilson just due to the fact of what he provides to the team. But, you know, it's, it's really just the downside, which I appreciate the challenge of the character more than anything else, but... You know, that's neither here and there. That doesn't really have merit as to how good the character is. Where is a character that I could go on and on about and have? You know, check out this video. She excels at what she does, and what she does is very varied. She does have a bit of a learning curve, but it's not really that bad, especially given the rest of her perks. Starting off with her craftables, she has access to the Royal Tapestry, which is necessary to make a Merm King. She has Craft Merm Houses, which allows her to make homes for merms. Merm Flortifications, which gives her access to Warrior Merms. A Clever Disguise, which allows other characters to benefit from some of Wirt's perks, such as hiring Merms and immunity to frogs. And she could craft Marsh Turf, which is what is required to place down all of these buildings. She can see where tentacles are, since they're highlighted for her in a small white circle. Wirt doesn't lose her inventory from drowning in the ocean, and only gives Wirt 50% wetness to do so. She is immune to most wetness effects since she doesn't lose sanity when wearing wet items due to the slippery effects of rain or moose goose and Berger for that matter. But keep in mind that she still loses temperature when she's wet. Durians and kelp fronds don't give Wirt a negative sanity effect, which is kind of big because it allows you to rely on those two things. She also has the both downside and upside depending on how you look at it of the sea wreath, garland, and milkmaid hat having flipped sanity values meaning the Garland will actually take away Sanity, but the Sea Wreath will increase it. She has the perks of Pocket Fish, which just gives her 3.3 Sanity per minute whenever she has an alive fish in her inventory, and they deteriorate at a rate of 0.25 times the speed, and Dead and Spoiled Fish will make her lose 4.4 Sanity a minute. Work can also read books to influence her Sanity, with some raising and lowering it, depending on the book. She doesn't, however, get the benefits that Wickerbottom or Maxwell will get from reading the books. Wirt also has the downside of pigs being hostile towards her, and she can't trade with the Pig King. This doesn't mean that she's a monster character, however, as Buddy Men and Cat Coons don't attack her, which is pretty nice. One of her biggest downsides, however, is that she is a herbivore, which means that she can't eat meat and can only eat vegetables, fruits, and goodies. But she gets a higher hunger value from eaten vegetables and fruit. Really, for the most part, Wirt's only downside is her setup, which isn't too bad given that, with the use of her perks, she can gather most of the resources she needs pretty quickly and easily. Her ability to harvest large quantities of woods and rocks is insanely good, since merms can do both at all hours of the day. Her ability to farm enemies is made better with merms, since they will be hostile towards most enemies by default, and they won't eat a majority of drops from the common mob. Wirt has the ability to move faster on Swamp Turf, which she will probably cover as much as she can in just because of how merms work. Her ability to ignore most seasons is insane, since Ice Breams allow you to ignore Summer, and Sunfish basically allow you to ignore Winter. Paired with her strong grip and ability to ignore wet clothing, allowed her to ignore Spring about the same as any other season. She also gets more hunger from eating vegetables, paired with her ability to eat kelp with no drawback, makes her an amazing character for survival. 
Her combat abilities are increased due to Merms and Merm King being present, since Merm King will buff Wirt's stats to an insane degree for as long as she's alive, making Wirt one of the tankiest characters. Wirt is an amazing character once you get the ball rolling. She is so incredibly strong. Like, this graph is probably, like, th this isn't an understatement. I, I was a bit worried about whether or not I was overhyping Wirt just due to this graph alone, but, like, a lot of people agreed because Wirt is just that insane in what she can get. Like, if you haven't played Wirt already and you haven't, like, actually given her a good old college try, so to speak, I would definitely recommend it because this is just, like, insane. Obviously, Wirt is fucking... <laughs> Wirt is S-tier, easy. If not the best character in the game, period. Walter is a very much don't get hit type of character due to his various downsides. Walter does however have a couple of cool options that are mostly unique to him. He has access to the trusty slingshot, which has different rounds that he could use. He has the basic pebbles, which deal 70 damage made with rocks. Gold rounds, which are 34 damage made with gold. Marbles, which is 51 damage made with marble. Freeze rounds, which freezes enemies made with moon rock and blue gems. Slowdown rounds, which gives 17 damage and reduces the speeds of enemies by a third for 30 seconds, uses moon rock and purple gems. Poop pellets, which force non-boss mobs to lose aggro when they get hit by them. Cursed rounds, which deals 51 damage and has a 50% chance to summon a shadow tentacle. Melty marbles, which deal 59.5 damage, which is a trinket, you know, from trinket things. The camper's tent, which functions as a portable tent. The pine tree pioneer hat, which reduces sanity drain from receiving damage by half and a sanity drain from missing health is also reduced by 50%. He starts with one and can craft one using 4 silk, and can be given to other survivors for plus 2 sanity a minute. He has access to Wobi, which has an extra 9 inventory slots, and can be fed monster meat to transform into Big Wobi, which functions as a budget beefalo. He has sanity aura immunity, meaning that he doesn't lose sanity from being in insanity auras, but he's also unaffected by clothing, which means Walter doesn't gain any sanity from clothing. He cooks on fires faster, meaning that, you know, as the name would apply, he just cooks on fires faster. Similar to Willow, and he is also able to use Willow's lighter to cook food. He has half the hunger drain when he sleeps, which, once again, a self-explanatory perk. He has access to his story time ability, which generates a sanity aura of up to plus 10 a minute for every survivor close to the fire. Walter also loses sanity when he loses HP, however, to twice the amount of HP lost when hit, and loses a 1 to 1 sanity when starving, freezing, or overheating. The Pine Tree Pioneer Hat does have it, however, so it's good to have. Walter loses sanity passively when his health is missing, at a rate of 0.2 sanity per 1 HP missing. This is a quarter when he's wearing the Pine Tree Pioneer Hat, or halved when there are enough trees nearby, though this effect doesn't stack. He also takes 10 more damage from bees, which cannot be negated by armor. Overall, Walter is a kind of one and done deal. The fact that he has access to all of his perks right off the bat means that his setup is amazing. He doesn't really have anything to help him with harvesting or farming, but just due to having Wobi and being able to feed three monster meat means that his mobility is kind of crazy, being comparable to a beefalo. His survivability and combat stat, however, do suffer due to the fact that he will basically go insane whenever he takes any amount of damage, and this can be a huge hindrance while you're fighting bosses or just living your day to day. For that reason, I'm putting Worley in D tier. He's worse than Worley, better than Wes, which isn't a great place to be, all things considered. Wanda is a character that is almost designed around endgame and mega basing, just in her design. Her abilities are strong enough to make people think of her as one of, if not the strongest characters in the game. She brings tons of unique mechanics and tons of strong tools with her, those being the Clocksmith Crafting Tab. She has access to the Clockmaker's Tool, which allows Wanda to take apart any watches to get the resources back. She has Time Pieces, which are just used in crafting all of her watches. She has the Ageless Watch, which restores 8 age, and she starts off with one of these. She has the Second Chance Watch, which revives players at the spot in which they died. If haunted by Ghost Wanda, the clock breaks and only gives back half the resources. The backstep watch gives Wanda iframes and teleports her back a couple of steps. The backtrack watch allows you to teleport to a set point. The rift watch has the same function of a backtrack watch, with the bonus of other players being able to jump through and carrying heavy objects through it. It basically functions as a temporary wormhole. Wanda's alarming clock is a whip type weapon which deals 81.6 damage and scales upwards with Wanda's age. 
Wanda also deals more damage with shadow weapons as she gains up to 1.75 times the damage based on her age. Wanda also does not lose sanity from having shadow weapons equipped when she is at her oldest, that being when she's old. One of the big designs that Wanda has is that she doesn't really have health in a traditional sense. She has a minimum of 20 years and a maximum of 80 years, at which point she'll die. And this steadily ticks upwards and can be increased with an ageless watch. Due to this, she cannot heal with traditional methods, so healing food is off the table, making her ageless watch the only way to restore quote unquote health. Wanda is a very interesting character because what she does, she does well, and she has tons of options for most scenarios you'd want to deal with. And that makes her a very strong character even amongst the already mostly strong cast. Her arsenal is very unique in that nothing else really does it quite like she does. This isn't without its drawbacks however, as Wanda requires quite a bit to get to the point where she can comfortably use all of her perks, with the biggest bottleneck being the limited access to tusks to make the backtrack watches. Without a triple Mac tusk in your world, you are really shit out of luck in regards to setting up a travel network. Her day-to-day -day survivability is pretty admirable, all things considered. If you play cautiously and you don't take any unnecessary damage, Wanda effectively just has renewable jelly beans from the moment she spawns in. She also has higher than average hunger, meaning it's something that you're not going to have to worry about for a longer period of time. And her combat, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. She has a whip-type weapon, she has access to shadow armor with little to no downsides, her whip weapon deals an insane amount of damage, the second best in the game. Overall, Wanda's like really, really strong. For the sake of being thorough, I should probably include him. Wonky is a sort of character that you can play at most any point in time. You just have to know where Mooncay Island is. But once you get there, you can very easily kill 10 monkeys to trigger the Wonky transformation. Wonky gained the ability to run after normal walking for 3 seconds, which will cause him to move about 33% faster. Wonky will also be ignored by the monkeys on Moonkey Island, though this doesn't affect the monkeys in the caves. This also has the unique perk, I guess is what you would call it, where it overrides the downsides and the upsides of a character. Due to him being accursed and essentially just swapping you to an entirely different character, Wonky will override any of the character's downsides, including things like Wigfred's only able to eat meat, and Wirt's not being able to trade with Pig King. Due to him needing at least one curse trinket in order to maintain the transformation though, Wonky will have one less inventory slot than the average character. Wonky is also slightly slower than average when he isn't running, and while he is running, he does lose 33% more hunger. He also has lower than average stats, with 125 health and 100 sanity, but he does have a respectable 175 hunger pool. Wonky isn't technically a monster, but pigs and bunnymen do aggro onto him, but catcoons do not. Wonky is more of a meme character than anything else. There isn't much to be actually said about him, aside from the fact that he exists. The fact that he overrides other characters' perks slash downsides is something that is good in theory, but the fact that you have to go to Moonkey Island in order to revert the changes makes this such an annoying option. Wonky is an incredibly interesting feature and is really unique. Uh, his setup is low because, well, Moonkey isn't the easiest island to find, and as a result, you can't even become the character easily. His harvest and grinding abilities aren't really anything to speak of, they're the same as every other character. His mobility is higher than average due to the fact that he does have the ability to run. His survivability does lower though, due to the fact that he will consistently drain hunger worse than most other characters. And his combat is about average. Wonky is just kind of a meh character all things considered. I'll probably put him at like B, B minus. Like I, I have a hard time taking him seriously, which I guess is the point of the character. What I hope this list has shown you is that characters in this game are all pretty strong, all things considered. I think this game is amazing in that most characters are good options that anybody can play pretty well. But characters still have options unique to them, which will influence how you play the game and contribute to your goals. Hopefully nobody takes what I say in this tier list video as gospel, and I especially hope that nobody becomes obnoxious about my opinions and starts preaching about it or anything like that. At the end of the day, you should play the characters that you enjoy the most and try to get good at, using them in whatever way that you can. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Do remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And until next time, buh bye bye